Okay, this is a idle kind of overview as I design one of the maps for one of our secret project games, although it's not that secret, it's about zombies. Uh, that's all I'm going to say at this point. Um, but there's been quite a few requests about a tutorial on level design, as it would be. And since the last one actually did get a substantial amount of views, at least for me, and got as many as I would have liked, so looks like I'll keep doing these little development tutorials for the Blender community. Um, technical information wise, I'm not going to be much help, there's more predators interest. He does a lot of the coding, a lot of the scripting, a lot of the making the game the game. I just make the things that go in it. The art, levels, the guns, etc. Anyway, uh, so one of the first things you need to know about level design is setting up your level and basically just get, like when you're starting doing a painting, you don't just make a masterpiece out of the net, right? Uh, the first thing you want to do is get a rough layout on the main component, main components. So this is like a toxic waste kind of fallout re management kind of plant. So I've started with laying out the main area, just a flat plane so I know the shape of the map. And then there's gonna be a building right here, so I've given myself a little reference point. And then basically for good level design is I would call it design paying attention to the little things. And as you can see throughout the video, I don't really make anything from scratch. I'm just dragging off stuff I've made beforehand. Uh, this will save you a lot of time, allow you not to get tunnel vision when developing things, and uh, it's gonna help you fill and make levels a lot faster. It's gonna, it may seem like cheating, but all the major game design companies do this. I would recommend that you texture them all before you actually go and move all your items around. Uh, go play any shooting game and go look at a barrel or a traffic cement block and I guarantee you every single barrel and traffic cement block is going to be the same one but probably tilted or rotated or with a decal on it. A decal is a flat plane or any kind of like decorative kind of texture that you can just swap on. It's like cracks you can just put it on the wall etc. So um go make all your props beforehand. These storage containers pretty straightforward. Um, when you're designing games it's a good thing for you to have played games prior to it. You just don't be like, I want to be a game designer one day. Uh, usually it starts from playing games and you decide you want to make them. So when you're playing your next anything, any kind of game you want to design, get to know that genre, go see what the other games are doing, and study what's in the game and 3D wise, function wise, and how enjoyable the controls are to use, how awkward the controls are, etc. Um, if you want to make shooting games, which is what we specialize in because it's really the only kind of game I can see under pulling off side racing games, which are really simple. Um, for a shooting game, go get Call of Duty on the computer or if you want to on the console or Counter-Strike. Get a couple of shooting games. I hope you're just not narrow-minded to one franchise or genre. Not genre, but genre is shooting. And uh, go study the things that you find in the game. That's what I did. I got Call of Duty 4. Went around, looked at all the things they used and repeated throughout the game. Found pipes in the walls, they used the same palette, they used the same roadblock, they used the same oil tanker over and over and over again. They probably don't even have more than five different clumps of grass and they just repeat them. Uh, that's what I would do. Why would you need to make more? Because your mind just, you're not. Game designers don't usually count for the fact that everyone else playing as a game designer and you're gonna overlook it because you're playing a game you're not studying oh that grass is the same grass as the one over there it, you just don't register it so um, use it generously it'll save you time and time is very important in game development and management especially when you're working with limited numbers so make sure you're wary of that so uh, take your time making your props make them good texture them make them so that when they're repeated uh, they'll be fine. Uh, next thing when you're placing them down get creative with it how you want to place it. You can rotate them which is what I do here. Um, I just went into a scene in Call of Duty 4 and found a wrecked car. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. It was the same wrecked car rotated at four different angles and textured a different color each one of them. Uh, right on Call of Duty, right on. So uh, they can do that you gotta do it too, but you gotta do it creatively. You have to go and study how a scene is put together. Go look at real life, go get a camera, go 
to some industrial place in your town, go to a junkyard, and you don't all have junkyards, but go to it, look at anything, look at your room, go and look at random items, go to any kind of work site and take pictures of things, and then go home and model them, essentially. At least for shooting games, it seems to be the whole uh, shebang for shooting games. Oil tankers, storage crates, roadblocks, uh, you're good to go. And um, study what actually makes up a room and how rooms are made and it has to make sense, right? So this is a toxic waste management, so they've got your toxic waste in the middle, you got your wrecked cars, and some storage things. Storage boxes are the cheapest but easiest thing in game design. Uh, it's You're just taking up space, so don't waste your time with really detailed small objects. Uh, most of your objects are going to be designed very clumpy and they're just gonna have I'm sorry my cat is on my lap right now she has fleas and she's disgusting me and I can't think about what I'm talking about anyway use things that take up a lot of space these storage units are basically a cheap shot and it's used to make the boundaries uh, don't put you basically trying to conserve your numbers so you have your poly count and you want to keep it low and you want to recycle so I got these storage containers and they're not too detailed and they take up a lot of space so that's great. Uh, don't put too much work into the background in places where the players can't play but at least make it believable. Um, you can use line of sight which is really important because uh, the outside of this map is not going to be very detailed at all because I know players will never get at a high enough vantage point to be able to look on outward and that's what you can do. I highly recommend you go and purchase Counter-Strike and just go load up your own server and go into free cam mode and go look at the buildings. Uh, lots of the buildings that are supposed to be backdrops or background stuff, if you go out of the view of the map, you realize they're just flat planes. There's no solid objects at all, it's just planes. Um, so that's kind of interesting. You're basically just conserving using tricks. Um, another thing. And see I'm using the same block over and over again. Uh, like I said, to go and take pictures of different places, go around, get your video games, take pictures and see how they've set up their scene. Usually it is the same stuff, I, like I said, roadblock, pipes, um, storage container, that's basically all you see in shooting games. These really weird situational areas that don't really exist outside of shooting games, but they seem to keep using the same props. So. Go make all your props offhand. I liked I got a blender file and put all my props in there and it's organized in a box. So I can just load in that whole scene and drag all the props I want from that box and I'm good to go. Um another thing about design is you can't really just teach it in a tutorial, that's why I didn't have a rigid set of ideas to talk about when outlining this tutorial because it's not something that has a cookie cutter method to it. It does not, depends how creative you are and how much you can improvise and make like stuff that isn't real seem at least somewhat plausible. And keep in mind, it is a video game. Um, it, it's you're going to be playing it for enjoyment. Not you don't have to have the next gen graphics, especially on Blender. So if you want to have a nice spaced out game that has lots of room to run around and not too many props, but it looks clean and well put together. That's fine, it doesn't have to be like heaps and heaps of graphics and props because if I wanted to and I wanted to model my bathroom or something or my house, that would be a game in itself if I took every object into consideration. You can have a nice space out game, it doesn't have to be so cluttered. Um, another thing being said, since that you can't really teach design, just practice, that's all you can do. Make a small scene. Really do not start up big, you're just going to overwhelm yourself. So make a nice detailed scene, that's how I make some of my nicest maps, is starting with one small area, putting a lot of time into it, and that's like the central area, and then you just build off of it. Go, hmm, I have some grass here would be good, adding some pipes, and etc, etc. Uh, when you're designing buildings and things, instead of just having a bunch of squares, uh, you can do one thing. Try not to do this too much, you'll just increase unnecessary vertices, but uh, you can do bullshit faces. I like to call it bullshit extrusion. You have a cube, and then you just give it some beveled edges, like, you know what I mean. Like, these storage containers have little outlined ridges on the corners of them. It, 
it's not exactly significant, but it looks more detailed, it looks nicer, just bullshit geometry. It just makes things look more detailed, so you can do that. That's what I do for a lot of the buildings. You have a building and then um, extrude like a smaller section within it, random cubes for no reason, but you put a texture on it and it looks kind of convincing. So uh, yeah, <laughs> creativity, there's no cookie cutter way to do it, like I said, just mess around, make a scene, go study other games, go study real life, get all your props and start making a scene, it's not real. It's up to your imagination. And as I've, as I've been talking, this is starting to come together. I didn't know it was going to look like that when I started, but just work with what you got. Uh, I really like the Blender engine, and the Blender game engine put together with the 3D modeling as a whole because you can work and have your game set right in front of you so that's kind of nice instead of importing it all to an actual engine it's really hands on uh, and for the love of god please texture all your stuff before you start repeating it lots of these things aren't textured and I feel sorry for my partner because <laughs> he has to go in and replace them all again so uh, that's pretty much it let's touch up on some of the most important things just so you guys recall. So uh, bullshit geometry is the first one that comes to mind. Um, repeating the same thing over and over again and usually just rotating it, sizing it down and changing it in some way to have some kind of diversity. Uh, basic layout to start with, expand from there, go study real life places like that so that you can have a better idea of what would fill space. It's a game, it's not real life, so it doesn't have to be super realistic. And, hmm, what was the other important point? Hmm. Oh yeah, you're trying to conserve numbers, so if you have a really detailed thing, try to make it at least significant enough so it takes up enough space and it's worth it. Like. All those cars by the toxic waste are a lot of vertices and I would probably want to take some of them out and make a reduced model version. So be careful what you're putting down a lot of. Oh yeah, any creativity. Can't really teach that, but you just practice and you keep trying to make small scenes. Um, the most realistic and helpful one to be hands-on and learn right away would be go download a game. Go download Counter-Strike or Call of Duty right now, go through a level on your own time, Take a bunch of pictures of everything and then go make it. Uh, you'll just don't directly copy everything that's illegal. <laughs> okay, uh, that's pretty much it for now. Hope you guys had a good time. Good day.